Hey guys, Fuckskin Dave here. How's it going today? Don't have too much shine on you, do I? Okay. Anyway, working on this hat. Boy, I'll tell you, when you, uh, you got to build a hat, sometimes the kind of fur you use might not be the kind of fur that you want to use if, if you're making the hat. Uh, this long fur, this coyote fur, has really been kind of a tough go, but I'm in a kind of a home stretch here with it. Um, so like we said in the last video, you know, I'm, I'm starting to uh, to uh, do make things. Uh, Sarah got into leather leather work, you know, um, what do you call it when you engrave leather? She's been getting in that, she's getting quite good. <laughs> and so I've been going back into making some of the stuff uh, that I used to make years ago out of fur and stuff. And so anyway, I started on this hat. What I was trying to do was copy another hat that I have that was made with beaver hide, but I wanted to do it with coyote, <clears throat> and it's a lot harder to sew the coyote hide. So anyway, I'll get it to work. Just It's just one of the things where you just got to work at it. Um, Timber Drifter commented about um, years ago, going to the rendezvous with your tan hides. And that is really a good place to pedal tanned hides. And even raw ones, because there's a lot of them do-it-yourselfers out there that like to, uh, they like to, they want a, a raw hide so that they can uh, brain tan it themselves or whatever. So if you do that, it might be a good idea to keep the skull and sell them the skull too so that they can take the brain out to just freeze it. They can take the brain out to tan it if that's what they want to do. Myself, I just soon send it off to Moil Mink, and uh, when I get it back, it's ready to turn into something. And you know, it's pretty tough. Like a coyote skin, like this coyote, it's really thin, but it's really a tough material. Anyway, back to the beaver. Um, I, I hoop them, and, and I do sell them hoop. Um, and the mountain men like that, the, the, the guys that aren't trappers, but they do the reenactment they kind of like those because what they can do is um hang it on their teepees and stuff uh with those fellas if i was going to hoop it for them i'll show you hoop i got over here if i was going to hoop it for them uh i would probably use uh rawhide i'd make real th small strips of rawhide to tie it up with i've uh, been making um I've been making them now for people that aren't necessarily rendezvousers. Uh, these people that are, you know, log cabins are getting to be a big uh, item. Well, probably has been for many, many years now. But people have log cabins and they want to decorate their log cabins. And, and a hoop beaver really goes nice on that one wall over there where you don't want to put a picture. So anyway, let me show you this one beaver. Anyone, where here's one that that I hooped and see if it's better light like that. Does that help at all? I don't know. Probably doesn't help being on this window. Anyway, this was a smaller beaver and I hooped it. Um, but for some of these people that want log cabins and stuff, I mean, if you do it with raw hide, that's okay. But I think a lot of them you'll get away with just uh, this thong material. And actually, I just stretched it and used the same holes that were left in there from stretching it on the uh, on the hoop. So, and uh, this is just a willow. You got to get them in the spring when they're wet and they don't have any leaves. And you bend them over. And this is a raw hide tying it together. And the only thing left to do to this is I was going to get some feathers, put some feathers on it, undecorate it. Sometimes you can hang a look, another fur. Uh, from it here and, and here, maybe a marten or a mink or something or a rat, muskrat, just to decorate it. And uh, people uh, kind of love them. So, so this one here, I caught this in February one year when it was just, this was up in northern Idaho and the weather was really great. I think it was like in February, it was like 70 degrees. So it was a beautiful beaver. It's huge. Uh, they shrink a lot. Th this hide, when it was raw, was probably almost as big as the hoop, but it shrunk a little. Uh, you know, they were giving you 10, 11, 12 bucks for them, so it was like, no, 
and I made this one for myself, and it's kind of just become a just become a centerpiece uh, for her other stuff to be hanging, like that throw a piece of fur on her bag or whatever, and got the rifle up. But anyway, uh, that's just another thing you can do with these beaver, and you get maybe two hundred bucks for that if you put a little decoration on it. So that's a pretty good beaver. Anyway, I'm going to go back over here and work on this. Okay, so anyway, so I've been doing some chores around the place. Uh, we didn't get any snow, but it was like really cold this morning, like two or three below. And uh, I mean, you know, yeah, that's colder. It's not cold. But anyway, uh, it's time to, I got to go fill the horse trough up and I've got a heater in there. But uh, it's quite a ways. It's like I gotta use a hundred foot piece of hose, so I have to get the hose out of the shop and run it across there, fill it up, and then roll the hose up, put it back in the shop because of these cold temperatures. And I do the, you know, over your shoulder to get the water out of the hose, but it's just easier to put it back in the shop where it's warm. Anyway, I gotta go out and do that next. So hey, grab a cup of coffee and come along. Well. I got to do, one of the chores I got to do here is fill up that water trough. It was, I think it was like one or two below last night. So, um, the water trough doesn't have water next to it. I got to bring a hose out of the shop and fill it up. And then I got to put it back in the shop because you just never know. I mean, it, some mornings it's not that cold, but phew, then everywhere out of nowhere, it's like zero or below zero. So, I'll get that done. Get that filled up. It's about 20 right now. So, with the sun shining and very little wind, now's the time to fill that baby up. It don't take long to get cold out there. We're going through the firewood this year. Uh, the below zero weather sure runs it out. One thing, <coughs> whoever built this house definitely thought about it. The sun comes up on that side of the house, and in the summer, pretty much kind of comes over the house like so. But there's a wall there, and it has two big five foot windows. And in the wintertime, the sun kind of comes up and it stays mostly on that side all the way until it gets way over to go down. Consequently, when the sun is shining, there's track, there's the teaspoon, there's the teaspoon. Sit down. Um, consequently, what would happen, okay, hand bone, go on. <laughs> if it's really sunny out, those windows bring in all kinds of heat, and it kind of heats this whole house up. And even when it's really cold, if the sun is out, <clears throat> the, it's got metal blinds on it, and they're kind of like little heating fins. And when I'm sitting there working at the table, it's like having a heater behind you. I can let this burn out, and as long as the sun stays out, we're in pretty good shape there. So, would you go away? What is your problem today? I fed you. You got food. Yeah, yeah, you got food. Anyway, so back to Timber Drifter, he was correct in building stuff like that. I think uh, when I was buckskinning like that, I think I like building stuff almost as I did, you know, making leather out of, out of stuff you can find in the woods, you know, I mean, using the brains to tan the leather and, and all that stuff and, and building things from the wood and and the things that you harvest in the forest. I think I enjoy that kind of more than anything, but there are people that like decorating with it, and so what he was saying was true. Um, so, anyway. so I was thinking about something. <clears throat> so here's a rifle. Actually, it's a, not a rifle, it's a trade gun that a, a friend of mine built. And I'm going to end this, this episode with a story about this rifle. Okay. Uh, so anyway, this friend of mine, a very dear friend, 
who uh, who's not with us anymore. But anyway, he used to build rifles and shotguns and stuff, and he he's taught me a lot about building these uh, guns. Anyway, I used to visit him when he was building this gun, and he was building it for another customer, and uh, he's a really good rifle builder, this guy. Anyway, Alan West was his name, in case any of you might have known him. Um, anyway, this one here, uh, he was building it for a guy, and uh, through the course of time, you know, it went to the guy, and it ended up back into his hands. Uh, I don't know why. I don't think it was because the guy didn't was unhappy with it. He changed his mind or needed some money or whatever. But anyway, ended back into Alan's hands, and uh, he was looking for a, a sharps rifle in uh, .45-120, which I just so happened to have one. So we made a trade, and I'm glad to have this right now just because uh, he's not here anymore, and he was a very good, dear friend. I was looking at this piece, and you should look at it, too. Nice gun, nice piece of wood. Uh, 62 caliber flintlock. He put, on this one, he put a little sight here. And it goes all the way out. Big, long barrel. Uh, anyway, I started thinking about these, and, you know, it would be an interesting thing to do. Since how... I'm in a impasse with the rabbits around here. I'm starting to get way too many rabbits to allow them to make it through uh, to spring um, if I want to have a garden. So I think I'm going to start eating rabbits. Might as well. Didn't get an elk, right? So anyway, I was thinking, God, wouldn't it be cool to load up these shot shooters and uh, go get some rabbits and use these old shot shooters to do it. They were uh, probably more prevalent on the frontier and in the West than rifles were because you could get small game and large game. And there was the dreaded buck and ball, which is kind of like our double-aught buck on steroids. They put a full-size 62 caliber ball and three or four 32 caliber balls in there and then shove it down and that was a good defensive round. <clears throat> much like our shotgun is today. Anyway, something to think about as soon as this weather gets a little better. And uh, sorry all I had for you was dribble, but I hope you enjoyed it. You guys have a great day. I'll see you next time on Buckskin Dave. Bye-bye.